Uh, okay. Um, so we're gonna summon a little bit just because I've I've got a few resources and um, the only next thing that's coming is Landy and then after that I mean maybe something new but by then you know um, I'll be fine. Uh, the only thing that I wanted was basically just a Draco plate. Uh, hopefully we can get at least one. So I'm probably gonna do one at a time. Unfortunately, not. <laughs> Uh, please don't take it as me trying to drag out the video or anything, but uh, yeah, I'm probably just going to be summoning one at a time to avoid getting too many. If we get one Luna, I'm probably just going to leave after that. Um, I did say that during the... Um, I said something to that effect of like, you know, we're going to cut off here and then I end up not doing that. Um, during the Summer Ice Area one, and we all kind of see how Summer Ice Area turned out. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, in terms of like... Um, yeah... Let's go take... I actually wanted to point out something here with regards to Luna. So, those of you who don't know, Luna's gotten a few buffs, right? So, we can kind of go over them a little bit now. Um, this did not penetrate defense the way it does now before, and it didn't have this acquire five additional souls. Um, and it didn't have... I don't think it had super effectiveness. It might have, actually. That, that part might have always been there. But basically what they did was they penetrated the defense um, and replaced the soul burn. So, the soul burn used to do more damage on this, but... They took away the soul burn and gave that and just basically incorporated that damage into the move itself by making it penetrate 50 percent uh, if she kills something uh she gets five additional souls which combined with uh, one of her exclusive equipments makes it so that um um she can go again so if she kills somebody now you're at 10 souls uh and then she can immediately take her next turn and do the s1 right which everyone knows her s1 is uh, most of her damage comes from this um they give the soul burn to max out how many attacks it does, and for those of you who don't know how the multipliers work on this, this actually does more damage than like her her S three most of the time. Uh, so that's kind of how she works, right? She's just supposed to be here. That's what she she works now. She didn't used to have uh, the soul burn on this, uh, but everything else is basically the same. The only the biggest change I feel, I mean, that this kind of changes her purpose a little bit because now you can kind of use her as a single target nuke, right? And this is kind of one of the things I was talking about when I was talking about bringing someone in to deal with like a um a fire charlotte of course she's probably gonna die because she's not gonna dodge the fire charlotte but regardless it's fine um against fire i don't know if the, how well they stack but we'll go over these buffs for now but anyway the idea is you hit her with this maybe defense breaker if if she's not dead she's gonna get defense broken unless she has like um what's it called unless she has um immunity uh, but from what I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of people with like 14k HP um, Charlottes because you kind of want to boost her defense more because she has a defense buff, so she scales the defense better. Um, and the defense always, def like it's important to realize, you want some HP, but defense scales better with, um, defense scales better with lifesteal. So if you're lifestealing, again, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but if you're lifestealing with uh, if you're lifestealing, you hit someone, you get 1,000 or 2,000 HP back. You get 2,000 HP back. If you have enough defense to make that 2,000 HP to, like... If you have enough defense on you, I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to get that much defense because defense is, you know, whatever. But if you get enough defense on you to make it so that, like, whenever they hit you, you're reducing their damage by 50%, that means that you basically healed back 4,000 HP, right? So you, you heal, you know, your health bar back. The, the, the healing you get scales better with HP is the point I'm trying to make, basically. Did I say HP? Scales better with defense. I feel like I said HP. But if you, if you have uh, life stealing or any kind of like health regeneration from that based on uh, attack or something, it scales better with defense. Um, and also defense scales better with barriers, right? So someone, if you have a barrier on and you're reducing the damage they take, you're basically doubling the size of that barrier, right? So that's important to realize. Um, so th that, that's all the bottom line to say that a lot of um, Fire Charlottes aren't running um, super high HP builds. They're just mainly stacking a lot of defense so that the the, the lifesteal scales better. Um, and, you know, with the 50% death pen, you could definitely, I feel like, should be able to kill her if you can find some way to get her off. Now, her with, like, what's her name? The uh, the water lady. Um, her with Amelia would be pretty good because, you know, that's two waters into her and you deal with her if she's on defense or whatever. But yeah, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, this is a... This is, you know, she's a pretty good unit, but I think she's still, like, it's going to be hard to use her because you do need a CR pusher if you want her to do as much damage as, you, as her design is, right? Like, she's designed to do a lot of damage, and she's not going to do that damage if she's too fast because she's going to be missing out on a lot. She's going to kill squishies, but then every, everything kills squishies, right? Like, 
Violet kill squishies, um, remnant violets kill squishies. Like everyone, everyone can kill squishies. So like a lot of people like to say like, oh, you know, she can nuke this, but just like anybody can nuke that, right? The idea is you want them to nuke things that are hard to nuke, and um, you want them to nuke basically almost anything, right? So that's why remnant violet is so strong because he nukes mainly anything. He doesn't just kill squishies. He can do that if you need him to. That's the situation. Uh, but he does just like one shot. Um, uh, what's her name? A maid Chloe or a uh, uh, Ruel or just like anything super tanky. He just like destroys it. If he doesn't kill it, he chunks it pretty hard. And I think one of the things with Luna is it's going to be hard to do that. But she has the same kind of multipliers on her thing, right? So she has the defense pen that Rylet has. And she has uh, elemental advantage against everyone. Um, but the only thing that's worrying is she doesn't give herself attack buff. So you have to kind of bring someone with her where Rylet always gets his attack buff. And he gets two off. And then you get two off if you get, you know, this. Um, so yeah, I think she's fine, but I do think the one thing to make her better is because you need to make her survivable is is this here. So this used to be 50% uh, crit chance and attack when you're over 50, and then, 50, uh, uh, not 50, 30, sorry. The whole thing's always been 30. Uh, but 30 attack and crit chance over 50 HP, and then you get 30 uh, crit resistance and 30 uh, defense under... under um, under 50 HP, 50% HP. Uh, they they changed this so you so now for those of you who are newer, you can see that uh, crit chance and attack is are no crit chance and crit resistance are always active, which is pretty good. Um, the crit chance specifically, the crit resistance is kind of whatever, um, and the attack obviously you get it when you're over 50, and if you're under 50, then um, if you're running like Sigurd Scythe or something, if you want it to be bruisery, then basically you have uh, 25 attack whether you're over or 25 attack whether you're under. You just get five more when you're on, when you're over. Um, and then you get more defense, right? Which, uh, which is pretty good when you're scaling with, um, with Sigurd Scythe. If you're very low, right? If The problem with her is that she's just going to get one shot. Most of the time she's going to get one shot. Um, you can't build her tank enough and do enough damage is the problem. If you want, like, huge, again, it's, it's a trade-off. So you can make her kind of, like, deal Alencio or shoot levels of damage and then make her tankier. Uh, and they're just consistently hitting people, or you could make her do what they want her to do, and that's just nuke everyone, and that's that that's gonna leave you too squishy. Whether if like you're gonna be too squishy because you're doing too much damage because you're not building her fast enough, or she's gonna be too squishy because now you gotta put speed in her and everything, right? That's kind of one thing I want to mention. So the, the the last thing I want to just kind of say about her is I really feel like they should just give her all four of these buffs regardless of HP, and I don't think that that'll be broken. I think she's just gonna be kind of like. A water bruiser with single target damage um her changes haven't been out that long and she's starting to pick up a little more popularity i think um so that's pretty good but i do really feel like i don't know like if, if new angie can come out and do like 20 million things in her uh s2 then i feel like just giving her some extra stats in her in her s2 really isn't that big a deal right so i don't know um but yeah so like i said i'm not so bothered by pulling um luna specifically because um let's see like I said, I, I do think she's going to get one more buff, and I do, what I'm kind of anticipating it's just giving her all her passive abilities and just letting her have them, because it's really not that big a deal um, if they're all four active at once. Um, but I don't want to, like, max invest into a triple S Luna the way a lot of people have. Obviously, my build, this build sucks, don't, <laughs> don't look at it. Um, but I have, uh, here we go, I have, you know, two copies of her. So I got three in total, which I got from um, pulling for Draco plates back then. Um, so basically, I only need one more Draco plate, and we should be solid from here. I have to go fill up my inventory. I just realized. Um, but yeah, so we'll 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 take this one at a time, and we'll see how we get there. And I, I'll be right back once I'm full. Okay, so we're back. Um, but yeah, so like I said, uh, I wouldn't mind more Luna merges, but I also am not like that's not why I'm here. Um, I you probably want to keep a bunch of Draco plates. Uh, I'm not, you know, this isn't like an endorsement to like go out and like pull five of them or whatever. I have two of them and I had like four, three or four of them from the first time Draco Plate came around because I knew it was going to be a busted artifact. Um, I ended up not using it on that many people, but now I, uh, I'm i like down to two Draco Plates. One is maxed and one is one off from being maxed. So the question was to me was like, do I want to spend some resources to get the bottle of knowledge? Because I still haven't even bought the one for this, this, um this month so i can either spend resources to get a bottle of knowledge and put it in there 
Um, or I can just kind of spend some stuff here and get some more powder. So not only do I get to finish my last Draco plate, um, but I also get to, uh, I also get the bottle and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of solid. So, um, yeah, or, you know, the, the worst case scenario is we, we pull a, uh, a Luna. I don't want to go all the way to Pity, but I'm not really sure how far I'm willing to go or not go. Have we gotten a single shiny out of this? We have done almost 20 summons. I don't think we've got, oh, there we go. Uh, I can't click through this. Oh, I sure would. Did I change that? I might not have changed it. Uh, come on, five star. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think I changed the um, the thing to make them go away. So fifteen. Oh, here's another shine. Come on. Ugh. Well, at least that's two artifacts. That let's see what this one is. Uh, I'm probably gonna fodder these two. It's because I have, I have a max limit broken, max leveled up, um, Water's Origin, and no one's using it right now. Mm. And then I have another, I have like two, they're both max limit broken, one's max leveled. Um, and the other one's not very useful. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of like, I don't know, like, if if Landy, right, has like an AoE 50% death pen with speed boost and like 60% attack in her S2, like, why can't... Luna just have 30% extra defense all the time, like, and 30% extra attack no matter what HP you're at, right? Like, that's kind of what bothers me about um, how Luna's designed, I guess. Um, like, she's one of the earlier waves, but, like, they've, they've buffed her, and I feel like, why not just give her a few more, but... Because she's still not going to be in meta just because Landy's running around, and, like, Landy on Guiding Light is just going to stomp on her because she's only single target and she can't hit her, right? And if you're dedicating that much, like draft space into a um a single target unit you really need to like it better be a damn good one that's which is why like lqc is such a good unit right now because not only does she have the same def pen thing she also has 30 percent damage reduction so she's not to worry about like scaling the defense with the you know the passive defense prot um and she gives everyone like you know i don't know like i said it's probably i guess it's the difference between um ml units and limited units because i mean to me i've always looked at limited uh ml units as like basically um rgb ml fives that are more like easily accessible so like you know if you're free to play and maybe you haven't gotten very lucky with moonlight summons and you have you don't have like many uh ml fives or many or many good ones like if a limited unit comes out well, that's your chance to like kind of keep up with the curve there if they're so strong and and the fact that luna is so underwhelming is kind of sad to me but who knows like here's my thing like you could give her the buffs the buff i'm suggesting and then she, now she's overly strong but like who cares like you again like i'm saying like it's weird that they release certain things um that are just like excessively strong and then they're afraid to make other things kind of like on that level of strength like they want to tiptoe with everyone else it's like i'm not entirely sure what that's about not to mention luna's kind of like she's not the mascot but she's very like mascot-esque in terms of like she comes out on a lot of stuff like a lot of material um, so you'd think, you know, you'd, you'd want her to be pretty strong. I feel like those are, like, some of the top three uh, units, right? So it's Luna, Mercedes, and, like, Raz that are in terms of, like, representation. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I probably don't see, I don't see a whole lot of Raz in, in terms of material. And, um... But Luna, probably Luna's popularity, like, you know, quote-unquote popularity that she does. Because out, out of all the units, she's the only one with a, uh, like, a weird, like, Cool looking figure um spent an expensive looking figure mind you she's the only one with something like that and um yeah i don't know it's just kind of strange uh so here this is so we're getting a lot of um a lot of artifacts okay come on we're getting a decent amount of artifacts but um, it's all just going to be fodder, and we got the Luna. So I'm just going to duck out here, and hopefully we have enough to pull that artifact. So here's another Luna. I don't think I, I do. Oop, there we go. I guess we can do a Moonlight Summon. I'm still I'm still in need of. Um, I'm still in need of. Uh, let's see what we're doing here. I still need like 10 more coins, so hopefully... I mean, it is still kind of greedy to be asking for any kind of Moonlight 5-star, whether it's new or not new. <laughs> but like, I really just do need 
either uh, I need to either pull a Tywin out of like some some of these. Let's see what we got here. Come on, and we got nothing. Uh, Camilla, and we got Doris. Uh, I already have Max Doris. Um, so yeah, like I said, well, we're just gonna stop here. Um, save up some resources because. I do want Landy merges as well because she has an attack imprint and I'm thinking about changing her build to drop a bit of attack and give her more survivability. Um, just because like you kind of want, anyway, that, that yeah. I'll probably get into that um, in another video when I talk about Landy or when she comes back. Yeah, when she comes back, I'll probably like talk about her. <laughs> but in terms of Luna, um, obviously there's all kinds of builds out there. So there's like speed DPS build, there's... Um, counter bruiser build which is decent um because you can give her uh an ee i think i have it let's go take a look at her you can give her an ee that um makes it so she gets boosted 15 percent. but i think oh uh, yeah so let's let's take a look at this uh change so there's this 15 percent on infinity slash uh, this one's this one. I really feel like when they buff certain things, because I don't understand what this does anymore. Because like, for one, now that like they want to encourage you to like actually murder something with the S three, um, the fact that it defense breaks and attack breaks is kind of worthless. Because it's like if you didn't kill them, no matter what kind of concessions they're making, like oh he's not dead, but he's defense broken and attack broken, it doesn't really matter because like she was supposed to kill him and she didn't kill him, she didn't do her job and she's gonna die, right? Like. That's kind of like, we're, you know, going back to like the RTA stuff, when I talk about RTAs, like when you're drafting or when you're playing, whether it's RTA, Guild War or whatever, if you draft a pick, they need to have a job and they need to do their job. And if they don't do their job, that's where things go bad. Um, so the fact that she has defense break and attack break on her S3 are, are kind of useless because they just don't do anything like, okay, he's defense broken, but like. Either you didn't kill him or you killed him, and it's like, oh, someone else can follow up, but that means that someone else is wasting their attack to finish off something that Luna should have done in one turn, right? Instead of taking, wasting half your team's turns to get rid of one unit, you know what I mean? Um, when theoretically she should be taking, like, one unit should be taking out half of their team, right? Because if she S3s, kills something, Soul Burn the S1 to kill something else, um, that's why you bring her, right? You bring her to fulfill the purpose of, like, okay, she's single target, but she's going to take out two units. And if she doesn't do that... You could still win. I'm not going to say you're going to lose 100% of the time, but you, you could still win. But a lot of times, you're, if you're winning that scenario, it's more like RNG is kind of swinging in your favor after you lost the... Like, you lost strategically because she didn't do what she was supposed to do, but you, like, some RNG swung in your favor. Um, but yeah, that's, you know... You could say you lost RNG when she didn't kill something. That's not RNG. That's, um, that's strategy. Because you attack something that you didn't have the gear... Like, you know, you should have lost that anyway because you didn't have the attack gear, the, the damage gear you needed, right? So that wasn't RNG so much as just the way the game is designed, right? Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, for right now, uh, I'm keeping her on this because I'm probably going to switch over to this build. Um, try to make a decent version of this build where I can just nuke someone and then um, S1 someone else. Um, the problem being, like I said, she's just really squishy. Like, uh, my... my None of this attack here has uh, defense percentage. It's all just like health and, and um, attack and crit chance or whatever. Um, so it's not that good. But um, yeah, I mean, eventually I'll put her on a build that has um, decent tankiness and then see how she works from there. Now, the only problem is like this crit resistance is meant to give her tankiness, but it, in, in, in practice, it's not very good. It's just kind of like, well, there you go. It'll, it'll do something, I guess. Um, and then obviously this right here, you're probably closer to like, uh, I don't know, 45 or something because you're, you're missing the 30% from this. I don't, it doesn't show it. It shows you, yeah, it shows you the crit chance. So the crit chance is included here already, but it doesn't show you, um, the attack percentage because the attack and the defense are both, uh, depending on your HP. So this is higher than should, than it, it looks like. And the attack is higher than it looks like, depending on her HP. Uh, I do think Merciless Glutton is a pretty good um, pretty good artifact on her if you're using her for a single target uh, damage dealer. Because um, this scales your all your damage, right? So if you have crit damage on top of this, it only multiplies your, your, your multipliers. But the fact that this is just like a raw 
damage increase. It multiplies both your crit damage and your attack and, and the multipliers that are attached to your attack. Uh, whereas crit damage is one layer under. You're just boosting one number. You're adding one number. It's basically additive to your crit damage. Where this is multiplicative to the whole um, the whole equation. Um, yeah. Uh, what was I going to say? So, and the fact that you get like... Like if she kills two people right now, it's not leveled up, right? Obviously, it goes up to 16 and 12. I think it's... That seems kind of low if it's 12. Um, but anyway. Uh, it goes up to 16 or 12, I, I presumably. Um that's that's actually a lot of damage like even just 10 percent extra damage is no joke uh 15 is like getting up there and then you know 10 percent cr push 20 percent cr push because you killed two of their units it's like it's partially overkill but it's also like sufficient amount of kill i guess as you can say um but yeah so this is this is the build i'm gonna run her on i need to make her something faster or probably faster try to make her like a not 240 speed because that's gonna be hard to do but something like that just like a like basically like a strays, right? If we can look at strays. I don't have them built yet, but just to look at them. Uh strays here, uh people build them at 240 so that like you're not out you're not speed contesting, mind you. Um but you are outspeeding most like tank drafts, so he can just go in there one shot somebody um and then, you know, he go he does what he does from there, right? So, that's kind of that. Um So yeah, that was my summoning session for Luna. Obviously, we uh didn't get much out of that. We didn't even get a 5-star effect. We got her before pity, so we got to save quite a few resources. And um, I'm going into the landy thing. The thing that like it's so annoying because uh, Luna's here, and the only thing you want from Luna is her artifact and not her character. But then Landy's coming, and the only thing you want from Landy's banner is her and not her artifact. Which I, don't know, I just it, it's really annoying. Um, her artifact's not bad. It's just not. Uh, I actually have a few. Watch. Let's go look at. Let's go look at this real quick. So I think for most of you. Save for Landy, because if it's between Landy and Draco Plate, Landy is infinitely better than Draco Plate. So if it's between Landy and her arty versus Luna and her arty, then obviously, you know, the fact that Landy comes with like a garbage arty, or no, it's not garbage, but like an, uh, an artifact no one's using or no one cares about, um, it doesn't really matter. Landy is just so much better than Luna that, you know, you really need her. And if you're going to play RTA, uh, you really do need a Landy um, built to some degree. You can still see my two ice areas are there because. She's just not worth building. Um, I actually have a few of these. Where are they? Are they in here? Which one is it? Oh, maybe I don't. Oh, yeah, there you go. See? Two of these. Uh, Wall of Order. Um, she gets greater... She can get a greater attack buff at the beginning of the turn, but that's not really useful. Um, yeah, it just doesn't do very much. Um, yeah, so we will... Uh, it's just that Landy's strength comes from the fact that she's like a basically another Spectre Tenebria. Like the reason Spectre Tenebria is so strong in the meta right now, um, like all the things that make uh, Tenebria so strong in the meta right now are what makes Landy so strong in the meta right now. So if you don't have uh, an S10A, then you know pulling for Landy on on her limited banner is, is always a good thing because you know you basically have her level of power in a green unit um, that you can you know summon as a free to play player and not have to worry too much about RNG. Um, but yeah, so like I said. Hopefully you guys uh, get better luck because Draco Plate basically is the only thing you need. I guess the last thing I could say is what I'm using Draco Plate on for anyone who maybe is... I mean, it's not like hard to figure out who to use it on, but it's not good for everyone. And you don't need as many as like somebody might make you think they you need them. Like like Ravi could probably use it. She'd be decent with it. Um, but I do like her on Sigurd Scythe more. Um, yeah, it's just not it's not really optimal on her. The people you want Sigurd, um, Draco played on are people who have, like, good, uh, like, there's a reason you don't put it on her, because all you're doing is getting, like, 30% crit damage, so you're at 300 now, which isn't really that big a deal, considering she's already doing, you know, you're already kind of handling a lot of the damage anyway, and her, a lot of her damage comes from her attack, rather than just her crit damage. Um, so some good examples of, like, who uses it are, where is she? Uh, Lencia, right? So Lancia uses it pretty well because she scales with defense, right? Or defense, she scales with health. So the crit damage is multiplying um, both her health scaling and her attack scaling, and her like it just adds to her crit damage. Um, so basically, that's that's kind of something to, to to realize. So and a lot of like defense scaling heroes can use this a lot because like what are you like what are you gonna give them right? Are you gonna give them like this gives them both tankiness and damage right? 
uh, in a way that they already maximize getting that damage out of, right? So if you get, if you put something like uh, an ear, in, like an Ubeard's tooth or something to get more damage, well, she obviously doesn't scale very well with attack, right? But most units can scale with defense. Um, so like you know, a unit like if you're gonna build like a tanky Eufine, um, she still wouldn't be very good because you just want to give her something that like scales her attack to absolutely just one shot something. Um, the another example that I use it on. Right now, I only really have it on two units, and I don't really need it on any third unit. Like, I've not, I don't have a third unit built where I'm like, oh, I really do need this on her, or him, if if it's a dude. Um, Designer Lilibet is the only other person who I I have it on because again, she scales off of defense, so you're multiplying the defense scaling with more crit damage, and then you give her like on top of having like a lot of defense, you give her uh, damage reduction from here, and it kind of like you you get um you get diminishing returns right but they still stack right so it's like a lot of people don't know how diminishing returns works i'm not going to explain it but like just realize that they you get diminishing returns which is not a good thing but you're still not getting zero or you're not getting anything negative out of it it's just diminishing um and yeah so the, the main point was to get another jaco plate to max this out but i'll just i guess i'll just have to bottle it um, there's not a whole lot of other artifacts I really, like, I'm desperate for, um, for getting. Uh, here's another example of, like, you could probably put Draco Plate on him. Oh, no, no, you can't. Um, no, here, here we go. This is what I had. For some reason, I was thinking, uh, Kawazu with strays. Um, you could kind of put Draco Plate on him to give him some tankiness and some more damage. Um, but he doesn't really care about, like, crit damage as much. He mainly, he's mainly concerned with his attack percentage so that you can just hit somebody with this. So... Any artifact that you can give him that gives him more attack or something else, like, this is pretty good on him because then um, if he gives below 150% uh, HP, he gets more attack and then he just AoEs and he's going to full heal and now he's invincible, right? Um, next turn, you can S... Next, what I like to do if I have him on Sigurd Scythe is, because I've tried it before, is S3 and then you heal back because the they're going to focus him because they don't want to get hit with that S3 and if you make him tanky enough, he's going to survive. Um, so he's gonna wipe, you know, wipe someone off, get his HP back, and then come back. Uh, and then I like to S1 to give myself that 20% CR boost. Um, so then he takes some damage, right? Because you know, if if he if he's taken a few turns already, then like they've already burnt their S3s and he's still alive. So you know, it is what it is. Uh, but if he survives, then you know, I don't do the S2 immediately after. I do the S, I do the S3, then to S2, into S1. And then into S2, because then the AoE, you know, hopefully he'll be under 50%, then the AoE will give me a lifesteal again. Um, that's the, that's kind of the theory behind it, but like, like I said, a lot of people run him on Hellcutter, because that's kind of funny, but a lot of people run him on, um, I forgot what it was. There, there's an Arda, there's, there's, I mean, they're all, calling, they're all kind of in use right now, um, but he's got some Ardies you want to put on him if you want him to be that 240 speed um, nuker. I, I kind of had him as a slower, like, I kind of had him basically as a... Um, non-CR boosting uh, LQC um, for like light units so he just like it'll take a while for him to take his turn the way it takes LQC a while uh, but once he takes his turn he you know he just demolishes stuff so I had him on Hellcutter and then I switched him over to like Proof of Valor to have him survive but you know I wasn't really satisfied with any of those builds they were fine they just kind of did what they needed to but you know it is what it is uh, but yeah so that, that's kind of that's kind of all I wanted to say was um, who could use uh, uh, Draco Plate um a lot of people who scale with things that aren't just attack, so like you know, bruisers mainly. Um, especially, yeah, just tanky bruisers because you know you give them more survivability. Like if they have a lot of HP, damage reduction scales your HP better. Um, yeah. So, uh, what else? I think the last thing. Yeah. So I mean, Draco Play is just good. It's like it's good to have a bunch of copies now, so that in the future when we do get more. Um, more interesting, more impressive, like, um, HP scaling bruisers, then, uh, you know, they're going to be in the meta a lot more. So, um, right now, who do we have? Like the, the, the top three, like HP scaling bruisers or what, um, that, that can use Draco plate anywhere. Like, uh, Alencia, like maybe shoe, but not a lot of people like using shoe or no one just like has a shoe built. And I think there's like, there's other artifacts you can put on shoe besides the Draco plate, but it's, it's a decent one if you want. Um, and obviously the uh, what's her name ML ML Ravi uh, is is it the best on ML Ravi? Not necessarily, but the fact that she has so much damage scaling, and then you know you just give her a bunch of HP. Like I've seen some 30k HP Ravis, um, 
with like, and then you if you have Draco Plate, you're doing not only more damage, but you're also um, reducing a lot more incoming damage, so you're just harder to kill in general. Um, I'm glad to see people kind of like taking, a, like losing interest in the uh, ER build for for her. And I think what what's interesting about anyway, let's not let's not get too into it. That, that was the summoning video for those of you who were wanted to watch that. You're probably gone already. So um, I'm probably there's gonna be. <sighs> The day this comes out, I'm probably going to link it with another uh, RTA video. Um, so yeah, look forward to that later today or at some point today. Um, but yeah, till then.